Hi, I'm Will Hankey. You're excited. Yes. My company is called Red Canoe Media. Today we're going to be talking about overcoming uh, some mistrust issues with your content, with your web content. So, I saw it. Oh, it must be true, right? Everybody says that if you see it online. No, nobody says that, right? It, we know that if things are online, it doesn't necessarily mean they're true. But if you, if you do a search for, let's say, trust quotes, for instance, uh, Christy, you're just talking about your cards, those, those little coins, there's all kinds of stuff you can put on those things, right? Trust is like paper, once it's crumbled, it can't be perfect. Oh, that's cute, again. Trust is earned when actions meet words. Trust isn't given, it's earned. Tell a lie once and all your truths become questionable. I like that one. Told you so, sincerely, your intuition. <laughs> one of my favorites, never trust anyone with two first names. Oh, wait a minute, that doesn't look right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's better, right? Right, Richard? Yes. Yeah. Who wants to buy a car from these guys? Who wants to go to this website? And the first thing you think is, wow, I trust these guys. Yeah. Right? Oh, wow, I need to dig further, right? There's nobody going to buy a prom dress from Yvette on this site. Believe it or not, I think that's her purpose. Not 100% show, but I, I, sure, but I think so. Tuxedo rentals, click here, click here to advertise, all kinds of craziness, right? Probably not a huge trust factor when you land on this site either. By the way, I found this by just typing in Google horrible websites. Right? <laughs> Poor vet, right? So if we're talking about building content, everybody, if you're not, you should be building content on your site. Writing blogs, creating videos, doing a podcast, whatever version of content you want to create. When you're doing that, there should be some things going on in your head to help make sure that the people that read that content trust what you're saying. Fair enough? So let's talk about a couple different ways to do that. First of all, use statistics, studies, trends, research, and data analysis. Okay, that's cool. I mean, it sounds really good, right? But if you're writing content and you're citing other issues or other things, and I'll show you an example in a minute here, it really does a couple things. It breaks up the content, right? You're not reading this huge piece of content of just line after line and it looks really boring. Putting different things like this in there can break it up, make it easier to digest, if nothing else. And of course, maybe illustrate your point in a different way. So here's my health blog. I have a health blog and didn't know what I did, but I do. And one of the things that I said once was Americans need to make some drastic changes to their diet and eating habits. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That wasn't planned. So instead of saying that, that's okay. But what if I did something more like this? Americans need to be more conscious of diet and nutrition because approximately 38% of Americans are obese and nearly 8% of Americans are extremely obese. What I did there is I linked to a study at, you can see the link at the bottom there, stateofobesity.org slash obesity rates trends overview. When somebody's reading that same, basically the same sentence in two different ways, this one injects more trust with whoever's reading it oh, this person is citing some other uh, very important piece of content as well. So it comes back to me as being a little bit more trustworthy just by them reading that, changing the sentence in that way, adding a link to a, a third party. Number two, expand with facts and not fluff. Uh, there's a guy in St. Louis that says, uh, uh, David uh, Seitman Garland, I don't know if you guys know him, he always says something along the lines of uh, more content, less fluff, something like, or if you want, if you want more fluff, go pet a bunny. That's what he says, right? But it's great. Fill your content with good stuff, not just junk, right? So here we are back on my blog. Americans should stop eating high amounts of sugar because it's unhealthy. <laughs> 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 
What if I change that to something like this? American men should limit their sugar intake to 36 grams per day, nine teaspoons, American women should blah, 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 right? This is good content. This is not stuff that I'm just filling to fluff. It's more factual. It's the same information just expanded on in a way that doesn't add any unnecessary words, really. Uh, very good, very, very easy way to make your content longer. So one of the things when you're putting content online, and I'm talking in a text situation like a blog or something like that, the more words you have, the better, as long as it's good content. So Google watches everybody's websites, and they have something called time to long click. Time to long click works like this. If you go search for a result, you click on the first result, and within a couple seconds, you hit the back button. Google's watching that fact that you came back. You click on the second result, you were there for three seconds, you came back. Same thing, right, they're watching. You click on the third result and maybe you don't come back or maybe you come back five minutes later. Google's watching that and they're calling that the long click. So whatever was on site number three must have answered that person's question, right? It must have been the better solution. So they actually consider those kind of things when they're, when they're considering where to rank your uh, blogs, your, your different content and things, isn't that crazy? I and mean, that's really cool. But so, so one way to combat that is to write better blogs, create better content that's longer. And I'm talking 1,000, 1,500 word blogs. If you can do it in a way that consistently provides content and keeps the person's attention the entire time. Number three, don't link bait. Has anybody heard of link baiting? It's been a big thing on Facebook for a while now and they're really trying to crack down on it a lot, getting a lot less uh, link, building, link baiting. So here's a uh, definition for you. Content designed to attract attention and encourage those viewing it to create links to their site with the aim of improving that site's position on a list of results returned by a search engine. Sounds like craziness, right? So the whole reason that somebody writes uh, link bait and a good, a good uh, thing to think about is BuzzFeed. Has anybody been on BuzzFeed? Eight things you can't believe are true. You know, seven things to do this, you won't you won't be able to do number five, right? That kind of stuff is link baiting, especially if when you get there, the content doesn't match what the link was about, right? That's link baiting. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook was rampant with this up until about six months ago. Uh, they really started cracking down on it, which is really good because that's how we share a lot of things. Is, you know, you see something, uh, uh, there was, there's one that's been going around about their, um, they're filming the new episode of Walking Dead in Chesterfield or something, right? And you're like, oh, wow, that's cool. I'm going to share that with all my friends. Well, that's not necessarily true. Uh, it could have just been a piece of link bait. Uh, Dan, here you go. Here's two different uh, headlines with the same thing. Seven sugary snacks that will help you lose five pounds by tomorrow night. I, I had those last night. Did it work? No. No. <laughs> A different way to say that, or maybe a better headline, seven sugary snacks to avoid if you're wanting to shave those pounds. See, the problem with that is the word avoid, right? Ugh, I don't like that, but that's the way it is, right? All right, number four. Are we doing okay on time? Yeah, we're good. Down five minutes. Okay, good. Be assertive and committal and use the active voice. So when we're putting content up there, there's a lot of things that we don't want. We want to be very, very uh, confident as uh, Dale will attest to, when your writing is the same way. Be very con confident about things. People skim content. This is an I study done on a particular website of how people are looking at that site. And as you can see, if they're not interested by about the third paragraph or the third snippet, they're gone, right? So you have to really kind of get the good stuff going there. This is a blog I wrote called The Six Unwritten Rules of Email Marketing. It's around 1,500 words long. I know not everybody's gonna read this, right? It's really long. It's great fodder for the search engines and it works very well for me. However, us as humans are probably just going to scan this and look at my little bullets, right? Those are called H2 tags or heading two tags. So I put those there on purpose because it, it incites trust. It gets people the opportunity to just breeze through what they want. And then if they like number two, don't outright deceptive what does that say? Oh, don't write deceptive subject lines or something. I don't know what my own stuff says here, right? <laughs>
But if you're reading this and you see, oh yeah, I want to read more about that, then you might just read that particular section and move on to skimming the rest of the article. So here's some phrases that you could avoid. I think that, I feel that, maybe, or perhaps, and I'm talking about starting sentences with these kind of words. I'm not sure, but, you know, all of these things might be good when you're, when you're writing because you write how you, how you talk a lot of times. These things need to be gone back and edited out to, and changed to something much more confident. Agree, Dale? Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> I'm working on getting the whole crowd in on this thing, right? <laughs> So active voice, it's a little, little tough, uh, but eating excessive sugar causes weight gain. Easy enough. Passive voice, weight gain is caused by eating excessive sugar. Little bit different, but it's just how you say it. It's the, it's the difference between uh, the verb acting on the situation versus the subject acting on the verb, something, like, something crazy like that, right? <laughs> but active voice, very good way to kind of start writing things. And number five, take the high road. I may be taking the high road on the outside, but inwardly, I'm wishing I could punch you in the face and slash your tires. I guarantee that's my wife every single night, right? Take the high road. This is especially in, in, important when somebody leaves a review on your site or leaves a review on Yelp or Google or Facebook, and maybe it's a one star because it just didn't work out right. So Nigel here, I know you guys can't see this, but basically, Nigel was giving away free mimosas on Sundays between the hours of whatever, 8 and 12. This guy decided that uh, Nigel cut him off at 1145 or something like that, wrote this scathing review. But Nigel's response was, please don't ever come back. I will stop bottomless mimosas if it keeps people like you away. Great job, Nigel. <laughs> You'll definitely keep him away and everybody that reads this, right? Here's Dale. Dale got real upset, and you can't see the first part of this where the review was written, but Dale decided to go into this long tirade about the lack of manliness that this customer had for, for his particular service. And at the end, you can run around and lie to everyone in this world, but there is one person you cannot lie to, and that is yourself, in all caps. What a horrible thing to do. I mean, it's just, you, you don't do that, right? I mean, pretty much everybody knows that, but there are situations when you've written something or somebody's written some bad review and you know it's not true, that you just want to respond, try your best not to. So let's review real quick. Number one, use stats, trends, and data. Number two, expand with facts and not fluff, which is tough. Number three, don't write link bait titles. Number four, be assertive, use the active voice. Number five, take the high road. Always a tough thing to do. So let's talk about some questions that you guys might have around this. Not everybody at once. Yeah, don't, don't give it to Dale. He's gonna ask me some crazy. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> No, you uh, I made an excellent point about you know starting sentences with those particular phrases uh, and, and citing statistics more. But for those who don't like to research, is there an alternative way that you can do it without necessarily being fact-based but still engage the person and get them to trust what you're saying? Um, I'd probably revert to video if you feel comfortable doing a video on your site. Uh, maybe halfway through something that explains it and shows your, conf your, your confidence a little bit better, your passion about that particular thing. Might be another way to create that kind of content, uh, which then, of course, you could transcribe and turn into a blog all on its own. So, does that answer your question? Well, I was thinking about experiential. If you, I was thinking about, you know, using experience, you know, I know you've had this experience in getting people to engage that way because as they're thinking about their experience, then they're revisiting and reliving the emotions that they experienced right. and so on, which is another validation technique. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've learned over the years to always use examples of things that has happened to you in the past, uh, case studies, anything like that just once again bolsters your content as well. Other questions? Richard, the guy with two first names? Sorry, I jumped in. 
Uh, I'm curious oh. about you saying don't respond uh, to a bad review. Somebody you know, gives you a scathing review. Uh, I've been to TripAdvisor where somebody has been to a hotel and they come up with some petty uh, complaint. Um, and, but I've seen some hotel managers respond and say, you know, really come up with a, a decent response. Yes. What, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I totally agree. I don't mean not to respond. I mean not to respond the moment after you read it because you're going to be steaming, right? Write your response, leave it there, maybe come back to look at it a couple hours later, edit it down to something that's not so horrible, uh, and then maybe post it, or maybe even edit it again a couple hours later. Yeah, I think there's definitely something, even Google says negative reviews are not bad. Everybody's business is going to get a negative review at some point. The way that you handle responding to that negative review will only improve the person that's reading the negative reviews uh, thoughts about that business. Yeah, you definitely want to reply, just maybe not immediately. A question, where do you draw the line when you were showing your examples up there? I thought the two lines were better because it was less, and as opposed to going into the big tirade now, you said for Google search, it's better to have more words, but from the reader's point of view, I don't want to read all that crap. Right. I mean, I just want, to, you know, just give me the nuggets, you know? Right. So where do you draw the line between that? So uh, where do we draw the line between what we want to say and get it done and what the search engines really want for us? Uh, I, of course, I'm a search engine guy. I typically err on the side of the search engines and create more content for them. I understand, like I said, that humans are not going to read all of it. Uh, so we break it up into pieces, use the headlines, use things. If you're wanting to come up with a number of, okay, how many words do I really have to create for a blog? Absolute minimum, I'd say 650, maybe even 700, 800 words, uh, which is a good amount of content. Uh, but remember, we're also after that time to long click. So if we're providing good content and the person stays on there longer than whatever Google deems that time, that long click is, then we need to consider that as well. Uh, giving more content. Uh, there's also something called 10x content, which basically means it's 10 times better than your nearest competitor. So find somebody who else, somebody else in your industry who's written something similar, take their blog and make it, make it better. So rewrite it so that it's better, it's longer, uh, and it appeases the, the Google gods. Okay. <laughs> all right, that's all the time I have. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.